Hello, my name is Matt Cornock, the Lecture Recording Coordinator here at the University of York. In this video, I'll be showing you how you can use the Echo 360 software capture to make personal capture recordings at your desk. These recordings are useful if you want to present a small video explaining a complex topic, or if you want to make an introduction to your VLE site, or if you wanted to actually use this software to capture a lecture or a teaching session in a room that isn't equipped with timetabled lecture capture. You'll need to download the software from the Downloads tab at https colon slash slash replay.york.ac.uk first, install that onto your computer, and then when you're ready, run it from the Start menu. Simply go to the Start menu and type in Echo, and then choose Echo Software Capture. This is the Echo 360 software capture interface that will allow you to record and upload personal captures to replay. First of all, enter a title for your recording. This is really important to make sure that your recordings are properly catalogued and available to students. So I would recommend that you use a module name. If you're doing it for a module and is for a specific week, add that in as well, and then include the topic. Set the quality setting to be high quality. You only need to set it to low or medium quality if you, when you record, you end up recording a blank screen, i.e. your computer can't cope with the high quality setting. High quality will also record in full screen mode, which the other two settings don't, and that can result in a squished recording. On the left hand side, you'll see the options for the inputs for your recording. The first setting is the audio input, which is the most important input for your recording. I've got here connected up quite a number of microphones, including a webcam, I've got my USB microphone, I've got my headset microphone. Where possible, use a USB microphone because they will be of higher quality than other types of microphones. If you don't have one, then you can probably get hold of a cheap headset and you can use that instead. Before you start recording though, you will need to set the volume appropriately. Now you can see here this particular microphone on the webcam isn't very loud. You can see that the levels are only just creeping into the green area and really we need our levels to be up here near the yellow. So normally I'm expecting to see my volume levels to be in this range. If they start hitting the red area, then you're going to get distortion, which will lower the recording quality and make it difficult for the students to hear what you're saying. So you do need to be able to adjust your volume level in the middle, and that's done on your own computer using the settings that are available. Next, you need to choose what video inputs are going to be used. The primary display option here is the main computer screen, and you might have um, other options available there. So that has to be set to primary display, and that's the main thing you're going to be recording. Secondly, you can choose the webcam, and uh, that will allow you to record whatever appears on your computer's webcam. And some of you might have USB visualizers as well, and that allows you to record handwritten notes or annotations on work or something along those lines. But I'm not going to be using that for this recording, so I'm going to choose that to none selected. So now you're ready to record. Simply click the recording button and away you go. For this demonstration, I'm just going to show you what you can do with PowerPoint. So I've got my PowerPoint up here. I'm going to start my PowerPoint presentation and I'm just going to walk through some of the slides here. So the idea of personal capture is that it's a good way of showing something in a visual format rather than through text. Some concepts are just better explained visually. So this is the idea of personal capture that you can go over maybe a complex idea or something you've identified from a lecture that students didn't understand and reiterate it in a different way. So once I've done my recording, I can then pause or stop it. The quickest way is to cancel your presentation and then go back to the software capture. You can see at the bottom there, we've got an icon for the software capture with the recording logo with it. And we're gonna choose pause here and that's gonna pause my recording or and I can resume it if I need to, or I can stop it. There are a couple of keyboard shortcuts as well. So if I just set that off recording again, to pause your recording, you can press Alt and F5. That will bring up the software capture screen. And you have to remember to resume it if you're gonna carry on. And to stop a recording, you press Alt and F6, and that will stop the recording. As soon as you stop the recording, it will put it within the recordings pane and lower part of the software capture window, and you can then start editing it. You don't actually have to edit all your recordings. Some of them will just be fine as they are, but if you did want to edit, then you simply hover over the recording, click the edit icon, and then you're taking it to the editor window. The editor window allows you to play through your recording. You simply click the play button, 
or you can click onto the timeline whilst it's playing and you can see how that's now jumping through parts of the recording we've made. You can chop off the start and end, so you just use the little grey rectangles at the start and end and I'm just going to drag that to the point where I actually start my presentation and I'm going to drag the end to where I finish it, so I just need to find out where that is by clicking on the timeline. I'm just going to play a little bit and that's going to be where my presentation ends, so I'm just going to drag that to the 53 I think it was. There I've chopped off the start and end. If I've made a mistake somewhere in the middle of my presentation, I can drag these triangle toggles, select an area, and then click Make Cut. And that will remove that segment of my recording. I can do that as many times as I like. If you've made a mistake, unfortunately there's no undo option. You have to use the Clear Cuts button there, and that will wipe all the edits from your recording. Um, and then you can start again and make some changes. If you're happy though, and you're ready for that to be saved, you can click the Apply Edits button. But beware that when you do apply your edits, you cannot then go back and change the recording. If you did need to do that, um, it's better to upload the whole recording as it is into the replay server, and then use the online editing tool instead, because that will save a copy of the original file. If you're happy with your edits and you're using the software capture to make your edits, then you can click yes and then that will preserve those edits. Now you're ready to upload. To do this, hover over the recording and then click the publish icon. Before you're able to actually publish your recording, you will need a license and you can get hold of that by requesting it using our online form. Log in with your University of York username and password and then you'll be presented with the publishing options. First of all, make sure that the title of your recording is correct, because that is the most important piece of information about your recording that we have. And that will help students identify which part of your module the recording relates to, and obviously allows you to keep track of the recordings that you've made. Then in the course drop-down option, these are the courses that we set up as part of your request for the license. So you choose the course where you want the recording to be published into. That could be just a holding area or a test area if you're just testing out the system or you've got a, an area for events, public events, that might also be featured in the course drop-down. Finally, you will need to set the output setting. We have set up some options here that begin UOY for the University of York and these are the ones that we think are the best options depending on the types of material that you're recording. The standard option though will be single projection, personal capture and media ingest. There are other options available for webcams and high definition webcams, for example if you're doing um, annotated work by hand and you're capturing that. Ensure that the make available checkbox is checked. If that is unchecked, that will, means the recording will be hidden from students until you make it available within the replay server. So make this available at this stage makes it a lot easier and it becomes instantly available to the students as soon as it's published onto their VLE site. So click publish and that will start the process. It will be queued for a few seconds and then it will start uploading. And the speed at which it will upload will depend on your internet speed. When it's finished, you'll see the progress bar disappears and that has been uploaded to the server. It then takes a few minutes to then process that recording, depending on the size of the recording that could take up to a couple of hours. Once the server has processed the recording though, you will then get an email alert. So the email that you will receive will let you know that your recording has been uploaded and is then available for students to view through whatever means we've set up as part of your request for access. So this could be within a VLE site, and that, in that case the recording will automatically publish into the VLE space, or it could be that you've requested just to have an email publisher, and that means that you will then need to send students emails with these links in. Each of these links provides a different option. So you have to send these links and not the link to the main replay system. So don't send the replay.yorktoday.uk link. That won't work for students. Only these links will work for students. The first link is a link to all the recordings for that module. The second set of links are recordings for just that recording that you've uploaded. So it depends on which link you wish to share to students, but I probably recommend sending them a link to the whole module. That way they can look back at all the other recordings as well. So that's an overview of the Echo 360 software capture for you. Um, as we've seen there, just a few very simple steps at the start. Enter the title, set the quality, 
set what you want to record, then hit record. To stop, you can load up the window again, click pause or resume and stop, and then you can edit and publish all within the same interface. For further information and the PDF guide, you can go to york.ac.uk forward slash replay.